we didn't get a lot of snow this winter, but when we did, it got me thinking about a project that I've been planning to do for quite a while. This is a sled that my wife Christine's great-grandfather had made for her grandfather when he was a kid, so we think it's about 110 years old. It's got some great details, like these loops for the pull rope that are attached with hand-forged brackets. The runners are joined to the riding board with these through tenons. And the metal part of the runner has this really cool hand-forged curly cue at the end. The two-tone top is as a result of an earlier repair, which for me really adds to the history of the object. And the original surface looks like it was used as a workbench, which is again part of the charm for me. You can see underneath that the whole sled was probably painted red at one time. And if you look really closely, you can see that it says, written on the bottom, sale $2 toboggan. I recognize that as Chris's grandma's handwriting, so you can imagine the sentimental value for us. They probably tried to sell it in a garage sale, and there'd be good reason for that. My father-in-law says the sled was really fast, but it was a lot more fun riding it downhill than it was dragging it back up again. My viewers that didn't grow up in an area where tobogganing was possible won't know that the trip back up the hill is really the hardest part. So the lighter your sled is, the longer you can stay out on the hill. If you contrast this 20 pound sled to the one that my kids grew up using, which weighs less than five pounds, you can see why this hasn't been used as a sled for a long time. So I'm gonna turn it into an end table. The runners are going to act as an apron for supporting the legs, so I don't want to really put them at the end. I'm going to put them here and here. You can see from my drawing that I'm not going to change the sled at all. I just wanted to see what the legs I had envisioned were going to look like. I'm going to use this reclaimed walnut. and. Based on the idea that an end table should be two inches lower than the arm of the couch that it sits next to, I'm going to cut the pieces to length. I want the legs to be tapered, so I'm using a tapering jig for my table saw, cutting them one and a half inches wide at one end and three and a half inches wide at the other. I put the narrow end against the stop block and then arrange the other end so that it gets cut at the right width and then I put the angle block against it and screw it down. Of course the tapering jig has a piece of wood that fits into the groove on my table saw attached to the bottom of it and that allows it to run back and forth smoothly. Once all the leg pieces were cut out, I sanded off the old finish. I fit the legs onto the sled to make sure that they looked good before making any final decisions. I also used a pencil to trace through the sled runners onto the opposite side of the leg so that the legs didn't show through the spaces between the runner and the top of the sled. You'll see a little later on that this wasn't actually sufficient to hide the legs uh, between those spaces and it just goes to show that trying things out, dry fitting them, uh, is often worth it. The two back legs are splayed backward so at this point I'm just cutting the angle that I want the legs to be at. And for some reason I thought they could be three and a half inches 
wide and fit between those two slats, but they actually need to be three inches. So instead of cutting them narrower, I actually just cut a notch out of them. And then I mark each leg, front right, front left, rear right, rear left. Once I get the leg attached at the angle and depth that I want, I use a protractor to measure the angle and also draw a line against the runner on the leg so that I get the depth and angle to match on the other side. I take the leg off again and then transfer the marks that I've made onto the other leg. Once the legs are cut and reattached, I lined my eye up with the edges to see that they were parallel. Then I attached the front legs just so that I could get a sense of how the table was looking. I had actually deliberately cut the legs a bit too long because of course it's easier to take some length off than to try and add it. You can also see the top of the leg through that space, so I'm going to cut them back at an angle. And the table seems a little wobbly, even though I'm certain that my workshop floor there is flat. So I have to make sure the legs are all the right length. And I do that by putting the table on my bench, which again I believe is flat, and then measuring from the bench upward on the leg at the same height on each leg to get them all even. The table is really stable from front to back, but I'm a little concerned that it might be wobbly side to side, and I decide to put in a cross piece between each pair. The distance between the legs is exactly 12 inches, and so I cut two 12 inch pieces of wood and then lay out the shape that I want for those cross pieces. I'm drawing two curves on the cross pieces that will mimic the shape of the sled runner. If you're interested in what you're seeing, you should subscribe to the channel so that whenever I produce a new video, you'll be informed that it's available to watch. It also really helps me if you click like. I'm going to connect the cross pieces to the legs while the legs are still attached to the sled. That way I know everything will fit together. And I'm not going to just rely on glue alone. I'm actually going to drill some holes from the side and attach them with screws. And then fill the holes with plugs, which is what I'm cutting here with a plug cutting bit. Once I decide where the cross pieces are going to go, I remove the legs again so that I can cut them to length, pre-drill the holes for the cross pieces, and also cut those angles at the top of the rear legs so that they don't show in the space above the runner.
Once the glue is set, I sand the plugs flat and use some wood filler to repair the holes in this reclaimed lumber. Showing you this spinning wheel that came from Ireland to Canada with one of Chris's ancestors might seem like a bit of a sidetrack. But the point in me showing it to you is that Chris's grandma actually wrote a note explaining who brought it and when it came and pasted it to the underside of the spinning wheel. And I've decided I'm going to do the same thing with the sled. But instead of putting it on paper, which of course becomes crispy and eventually crumbles and also the ink tends to fade and is difficult to read. I'm actually going to make a plaque and burn the lettering on there. And I'm going to do the same thing for the spinning wheel. On a couple of occasions, when I've been visiting my kids, one of their neighbors has put out wine crates for the garbage, and I've just scooped them up and I bring them home and disassemble them, and that's what I'm using for this plaque. I type out what I want it to say on the plaque, and because I'm going to be doing it in capital block letters, I allot one character for every letter, including the spaces. But the letter I, which is just a straight line, I allot half a space. Then I lay out the six lines and also where the letters are going to fall on those lines so that the text in the end is completely centered. I sand off the pencil marks and any stray burn marks that I might have made as a result of my lack of experience with wood burning. I used 220 grit sandpaper to take off the excess wood filler because that's the grit to which I have sanded the rest of the leg assembly. Then for the last time, I take the legs off so that I can put some polyurethane on them. I use two offcuts from the legs to test two different stains. They're actually a stain and polyurethane all in one. One of them is dark, it's called American Colonial, and the other one's lighter, it's called Golden Oak. For this project, I like the darker stain. After the first coat, I just knock off the burrs that have been raised with a 400 grit sandpaper. I vacuum off the dust and then apply two more coats of polyurethane. 
Once the legs are ready, I put them back on the sled for the last time. As long as I've been putting the legs on and off, I've only been using two screws through the same two holes in each leg. And now that they're going on permanently, I'm going to add another two screws to give them some real rigidity. And the last step is just to apply some felt leg protectors. I've really enjoyed giving new life to this family heirloom. And if you've enjoyed watching the video, please consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click the thumbs up button.